This is a video introduction to the article The Creativity of Digital Audiovisual Archives that me and Mari Oyama co-published in a journal Theory, Culture and Society. We argue in this article that there is a good reason to put into dialogue the cultural semiotics of Juri Lottmann and the media archaeology of Wolfgang Ernst. Up until now, these approaches have stayed clear of each other. This is because media archaeology has been focusing on the materialities of media and have been generally opposing the constructivist uh, and semiotic approaches to media and culture. But it's also because cultural semiotics has been also generally ignoring and oversimplified the materialities of media and their effects on meaning making. Yet we see that the dialogue between the approaches is necessary because of their complementarity. As cultural semiotics is a holistic approach to cultural change, it can be used to explain the broader dynamic processes of which media machines are part of. And at the same time, media archaeology can be used uh, to explain the technological mediation of contemporary culture. Furthermore, our close reading of these approaches suggests that both have quite similar concepts and arguments which eases the dialogue and makes it productive. We use these approaches to interpret the role of digital online archives. That is, we are interested to what happens to places like this, which is the Estonian film archives, when they are getting digitized, are taken online. The question is, what happens then to their affordances, to their functionalities, to their agency, and to the predictability of that agency. The predictability is important because, as per Juri Lotsman, the ability to create new, unpredictable texts is the very definition of creativity. Our theorization of the creativity of archives starts with a cultural semiotic understanding of the purposes of texts. They not only transmit messages, but also generate new messages as they are recontextualized by users and readers. And they preserve cultural memory as they are also used in different ways and over periods of time. For Rotman, text is also an analytical unit. Parts of text can be read as distinctive units and several texts can constitute larger text, um, again with distinctive boundaries and inherent hierarchies, as long as there are readers for such texts. The role of digital archives in this context is exactly to create the new boundaries that frame and reframe, connect and reconnect various composite texts. In this way, creating new textual holes at a higher level or in terms of reading sequences. That is, by creating new links between texts, they also create new reading opportunities and therefore new texts. As new texts are constantly added to databases and archives, and as their uses are counted, new links are constantly added to them that could completely change the context for any textual element in the network. As the networks change, also the nature of archives as texts changes. How are the links between texts created within archives? Even in case of human annotators, but especially in case of machine learning algorithms, the links are created by the realization of their abstract similarity, by the associations between the texts or by the associations between the groups of films, between the similar diagrams that connect them in terms of Wolfgang Ernst. The ability to generate associations based on abstract similarities is, however, one of the core definitions of creativity within cultural semiotics. While Ernst has explained that the aim of media archaeology is to study those linked diagrams as kind of new forms of organizing for contemporary culture, then in Lotman's arsenal there is a concept of modeling systems. Quote, a modeling system is a structure of elements and rules of their combination existing in a state of fixed analogy to the whole sphere of the object of perception, cognition or organization. Secondary modeling system then is a system that uses the elements of existing languages or forms of culture to produce those analogies. Digital archives can be understood as secondary modeling systems as they firstly uh, use metadata to model the object text in the archives. They also link and organize those existing texts um, in terms of modeling their 
the circumstances of their production, as well as the places of those texts in culture. That is, digital diagrams are being used to represent the system of culture based on abstract analogy. Contemporary metadata schemas model very different kinds of aspects and realities. What is represented in the films, who are the makers of the films, how the films were made, uh, who are the target audiences of films, what are the actual uses of films in digital archives. Because they are modeling such very different kinds of systems, they themselves become areas of unpredictable dialogue between those systems. Digital archives can be understood as also being creative because they themselves, the metadata schemas, are outcomes of very complex modeling processes. Furthermore, those metadata schemas that model what is represented in the films are mostly, in fact, in natural languages. That is, they constitute translations from visual to verbal. And this means they are inexact and as such creative processes. Those natural languages then also coexist in archives with visually functioning digital diagrams. And their meaning systems can always interfere, which means that there is always rhetoric tensions within digital archives. Altogether, there are all those reasons that make digital archives to behave unpredictably. We conclude in the article that while Michel Foucault and Jacques Derrida addressed how um, archives are structured by existing power relations and how they reproduce those, then contemporary digital archives are becoming hotspots of cultural dialogue. The new function of digital archives is their creativity.